Hi everybody, it is your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are wrapping up our Unit 6 on gene expression and regulation by getting into Topic 6.8, which is on biotechnology. And really the focus of this video today is going to be on genetic engineering, direct the manipulation of genes for practical purposes. So how are we able to take advantage of semi-conservative replication? How are we able to take advantage of um, complementary base pairing, the structure of DNA, how it replicates, how it transcribes and translates, how are we able to take advantage of that for our own benefit? That's through genetic engineering. Um, so we can manipulate DNA to make it anything that we want or make it do anything that we want it to do. And it's amazing. And we're going to talk about three main processes, uh, well, four main processes today of genetic engineering. But uh, genetic engineering is used in agriculture. Say if I want fruit, uh, food that is weather resistant or can grow in a variety of different soil types, or it is pest resistant, something like that, I can grow crops with a gene that can be expressed by that plant that will give it those traits. It's amazing. You can make organisms express the traits that you want through genetic engineering. Um, criminal law, okay? DNA fingerprinting wasn't even a thing uh, for a long time and it's exonerated so many people uh, based on, you know, DNA evidence. Uh, you find DNA at a crime scene, you can find out who did the crime, right? That's made possible through genetic engineering. And then, of course, medical and biological research. Right? You can grow bacteria and, or, or grow some kind of organism, make it express the gene you want, get a bunch of that protein, you can harvest it, and then use it and apply it for medicines for any number of reasons. Okay, so uh, many pharmaceuticals are made as a result of uh, genetic engineering. I can get these organisms to express this trait, make a protein, and I keep the protein and I can put it in my medicine and make people better. Okay, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, so three main processes that we're going to be talking about today are DNA cloning and transformation. We're going to talk about gel electrophoresis and we're going to talk about PCR, polymerase chain reaction, as well. Um, here's just an overall symbol of genetic engineering. Look, here's my forceps. I can take this part of the DNA out and I can change it around and make it do what I want. It's incredible. Um, all right, so uh, DNA cloning, what is that all about? Well, DNA is cloned using a vector organism. Okay, if you ever hear the word vector when it comes to biotechnology, that is an organism that you're making express a gene. Um, so here's the thing about using DNA. Uh, excuse me, using bacteria to clone DNA. You can take a plasmid, those little tiny circular pieces of DNA, and you can insert whatever DNA you want into it. Okay, so you can take foreign DNA. I have a gene here, I've isolated this gene, and I can uh, make, I don't know, blood pressure medication with it, like a protein that lowers blood pressure. I don't know, I just made that up. Okay, but I take this gene that I want, I can insert it into the plasmid of these bacteria. They're going to take it up through, from their environment via transformation. And then that bacteria is going to, you know, do what it does. It's going to survive, reproduce. It's going to replicate, make more copies of that foreign DNA. Okay. And it's going to make more copies of, well, yeah, it's going to make more copies of the gene that I want to express. And it's going to express that gene and make that protein that I want for my blood pressure medication. Okay. Uh, so... Pharmaceutical companies, biotechnology um, companies can use DNA cloning and use these bacterial cells to, to manipulate them and uh, make them produce what we want. Okay? Um, so it is pretty, pretty incredible. Um, but this process relies upon restriction enzymes, using restriction enzymes. And we're going to be practicing with these later on. Um, but restriction enzymes are enzymes that cut DNA molecules at a limited number of very, very specific precise locations called restriction sites. Um, and how these work is they find one particular sequence um, and then they cut both strands of the DNA at a very, very, very specific point. Okay, so a restriction enzyme only cuts a DNA strand at very specific points. Okay, so like SMA1, it's I think uh, named after like the bacterial cell that it was isolated from, uh, will cut a DNA sequence at CCC GGG, okay, and it'll whoop, cut it right down the middle here. I don't know the name of this one. This might be Eco RI, um, but its job is to R1. It should be Eco R1, um, and it's going to cut at this very very specific location. 
Okay, so restriction enzymes are really, really necessary in that, okay, if I want to take this gene, this foreign DNA, and insert it into bacteria, I need to cut the plasmid at very specific sites, and I need to have cut the, uh, the gene that I want in order to, you know, put it into that plasmid and make the bacteria start to express that. Okay, so restriction enzymes are going to be cutting the DNA in very precise locations in order so that we can change it how we want, okay? Uh, so restriction enzymes, when I take a piece of DNA and I cut it up using restriction enzymes, it produces what are called restriction fragments or pieces of cut DNA, okay? And here's a, here's a picture, here's a diagram of what happens when we separate out these restriction fragments uh, through a process called gel electrophoresis, which I'll talk about here in just a minute, okay? Um, here's the thing about this. Here's something, something to note about the practical application of using restriction enzymes um, in this process of gel electrophoresis. All copies of a DNA molecule always yield the same restriction fragments with the same restriction enzyme. Okay, um, so if I put DNA into this machine that I'm going to show you here in just a second, and I, and I cut it up using restriction enzymes, I put those fragments in, I can separate them out based on size. The smaller restriction fragments, the ones that are not as long, that don't have as many nucleotides, are going to be uh, further away from where they started because, you know, they're smaller. And uh, the ones that are bigger are going to be closer to where they started from. So how do you separate them out? That's gel electrophoresis. Uh, that's a technique that uses agarose gel, which is a polymer, like a carbohydrate polymer, to uh, separate a mixture of nucleic acid fragments by length. Okay, so what you can do here, uh, DNA has a slight negative charge, so you can apply a positive charge to uh, a negative charge to one side of this gel of a machine. It's called a gel electrophoresis chamber. Um, and a positive side so that DNA was, this negatively charged DNA will move almost like a magnet from one end to the next. And the smaller pieces of that DNA are going to travel further. The larger pieces are going to be well, they're not traveling as far. Okay, so you can separate out the pieces of DNA by length like that. Okay, and I want to go back to this point over here. All copies of a DNA molecule always yield the same restriction fragments with the same restriction enzyme. This is how DNA fingerprinting works. You can take DNA that you found at a crime scene. You've got to make a bunch of copies of it, but I'll talk about that in a second. And you can take DNA that you isolated from a, sus a suspect for the crime, uh, and, and then you can apply the same restriction enzymes. And if it makes the same exact pattern on your gel electrophoresis, that's your criminal! Okay, that's your uh, that's your that's DNA fingerprinting. It's matching up these restriction fragments, um, these the, the gel electrophoresis pattern with some of the DNA that you find from a crime scene. It's going to be the same guy because the DNA, all copies of the DNA, is going to make the same restriction fragments with the same restriction enzyme. Okay, so this has exonerated like thousands of people that are wrongly con uh, convicted of crimes. It's amazing. Uh, PCR polymerase chain reaction. Okay, in order to, you know, to do that, okay, you, you're not going to get enough DNA at a crime scene to uh, do a gel electrophoresis, so you got to make copies of it a lot of times, and that's what uh, PCR does. And by the way, gel electrophoresis has many more applications than just DNA fingerprinting, but that's the one uh, that's the most prevalent, I would say, the most well-known. Uh, but anyway, PCR is a process by which a DNA fragment or a gene can be copied thousands and thousands of times. So we are manipulating DNA replication here, and we're making it happen really, really fast. Okay, So I have a gene that I want to make a bunch of copies of so I can have a bunch of bacteria express it. Okay, I'm going to do a PCR. Uh, so the first step here is denaturing the DNA strand using heat to separate DNA strands, right? So uh, you heat some DNA to 94 to 96 degrees Celsius, almost boiling, okay? And the DNA is going to separate out into its two template strands here. Here's double strand. Here's the, well, here they're separated out. That's step number one. So we're kind of doing the job, helicase's job over here. Um, you anneal the, uh, the template strands, allow primers to bind to the target sequence. So I, can take a, so I can take some primers and add them to the template strands to express the gene that I, or to uh, copy the genes that I want. Um, you can extend them. You take a very special kind of DNA polymerase that is resistant to heat. That's not going to denature um, in a really hot environment called TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase is going to make a new make a new template strand, or excuse me, make a new complementary strand based off the template strand, just like we saw in our topic on DNA replication. Adds nucleotides to the primers, and then we can repeat that again and again and again. Separate them out. Add the primers. Make a, make a new template strand, separate them out again and again and again and again and again, okay, using this uh, thermal cycling, okay, and uh, 
take a look. We have one copy of DNA, then we have two, then we have four, then we'd have eight, then we'd have 16, then we'd have 32, then we'd have 64, then 128. You know, you can make many, 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 many copies of a DNA, uh, of DNA using PCR. Um, and it's just manipulating DNA replication and uh, the, using this heat resistant DNA polymerase um, makes that possible. Okay, so that's what a PCR is. Polymerase chain reaction is a chain reaction because, you know, it's one after the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Okay, right, last thing I want to talk about is DNA sequencing. Uh, things like 23andMe and Ancestry.com have been used um, a lot and they've become more prevalent in the last couple of years because we have new machines that can determine the gene's complete nucleotide sequence by adding a uh, complementary strand one nucleotide at a time. Okay, so once again, manipulating and using our base pairing rules to figure out what is the actual nucleotide sequence of a gene. Um, so like this machine is going to add an A and it's going to record that it adds an A, and then a T, then a C, then a G, then a G, then a G, then a C, then a T, then a T, then an A. Okay, and we can figure out a whole complementary sequence uh, based on a template strand and a, a machine that's able to track which nucleotides it's adding um, to a strand. Okay, so uh, DNA sequencing has become very, very important as well in that it's opened up so many doors um, and illuminated so many ideas about evolution and natural selection, and common ancestry. Um, the fact that, you know, organisms all come from the same organism and that species come from other species. That's really, really well supported by DNA sequencing. Um, we can figure out, like, how do we know that uh, humans and chimpanzees share 98% of their genome? It's from DNA sequencing. And we can track changes um, from, well, over millions and millions of years thanks to DNA sequencing. All right, so that's not the only application, you know, um, 23andMe and stuff. Even though that's cool, uh, that's not the only application for science. All right, that'll be it for this unit. Let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.